Welcome to our very first Facebook Live event, and we're going to talk about acne. So if there's anybody there, um, give us a little shout, and we'd really appreciate it if you give us a just a quick like. That would be amazing. So first of all, one of the first things we're going to talk about are the four main causes of acne. And most people don't know these, or they think they know, but there's four primary drivers of acne. The first one is actually inflammation. That's the very first and verse, most important one. Um, we'll come back to that. The second most common um, and biggest factor in acne is what's called retention hyperkeratosis. So retention hyperkeratosis basically means sticky skin. Um, there is a genetic factor involved in that and unless you carry that gene you're probably not going to have acne or you know you might have an occasional blemish here and there but not actual acne so sorry <laughs> we're having some <clears throat> technical difficulties on this end but we'll figure it out so um again like i said the retention hyperkeratosis so basically what that means is retention so holding on to kara which is skin ptosis, so sticky skin. So skin that basically um, sheds at a faster rate, but it clumps up and it sticks. And that sticky skin, as I refer to it, actually happens um, inside your pores, not just on the surface of, the, of your skin, but also inside your pores. So that's kind of a big deal. Most people and most acne programs don't even address that at all. It's just not on the radar. Um, so basically, if you don't have acne, or if you've never had acne, or you're not acne prone, um, normal people, if you will, their skin sheds at the rate of um, one to two cell layers per day, which is awesome, and that's nice. And I just hate to tell you, but 97% of household dust is dead skin cells. Ew. <laughs> Get out the vacuum and the, uh, the air purifiers, right? But um, so people who have acne, their skin cells shed much, much faster at the rate of five to seven cell layers a day. So that's a whole lot more dead skin falling off. And not only does it n not always fall off nice and cleanly, but it can compact into the pores. So you have to imagine your pores, like there's like a little cup, right, inside the follicle. And inside, all around the outside edge of the cup, the dead cells are there and they're literally falling into the hole into that little space and down at the bottom of the hole is an oil gland and that oil gland is constantly pumping oil and it's designed to float up to the surface you know kind of push through that follicle and then rise to the surface and um, coat the surface of the skin and keep it lubricated that's part of healthy skin it should do that it involves um, or it creates what's known as the um, acid mantle and the acid mantle is again, you know, just a combination of dead skin cells and bacteria and oil and all those good things. And um, my kitty cat has joined us. There she is. Say hi. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that um, that sticky skin and that whole mess gets all gunky inside the inside the pore. So over time what should happen is the oil that's naturally produced in your skin should then lubricate the surface of the skin and make that happy blend um, yeah she's a she's a bit of a ham isn't she as long as she's near me she'll be good <laughs> I guess she's really gonna be with me alright so everybody this is Isis Isis this is everybody this is Facebook okay <laughs> she's a love um, <laughs> so Anyway, we're back to our four causes of acne. So, oh, thanks, Kathy. She's a pretty girl. She's about seven years old. She's good. And she doesn't have acne, so that's she's, she's lucky that way. <laughs> hey, Zita. That's actually my mom. <laughs> um, so, hey, you know, feel free to give us a shout, and you can post comments in the bottom, because I can actually see them on this whole Facebook Live thing. It's kind of cool and interesting. I'll, we're figuring out how it works. Okay, so we're back to those four, uh, four primary drivers in acne. And like I said, so we've got one, which is the inflammation. You got two, which is the retention hyperkeratosis. We have, now we move on to three, which is the oil. So you have to visualize now you have um, a mass of dead skin cells falling, you know, shedding inside the follicle and they're shedding inside, which means they can collect 
um, it's kind of like a dam, you know, it's the, the, it blocks the flow of oil from coming out. So when you have that little collection of sticky skin and then you combine, combine it with the oil, then it becomes a big mass and it can slowly solidify over time and create what's called a micro comedone. Comedone is the technical word for um, blackhead, is what most people think of, but in, you know, esthetician speak, it's called a, a comedone. And the beginning of it is a micro comedone. That would be um, like a seed, like a comedone seed. And it takes, this is really, really important, it takes three, um, three to four months for that to actually form. So when you're seeing a blemish now, it actually started at least three months ago. There's a big thought. So we'll get back to that. So like I said, once you get the oil that combines with the dead skin cells, then what happens is it combines and it collects and it can harden and it can, um, it can actually oxidize on the surface and that's how you get an actual blackhead. So people with blackheads get really sort of bent out of shape. Oh my God, my skin's dirty. They're not dirty. You're not dirty at all. It's just oxidation and oxidation is what happens basically when you cut an apple. It oxidizes, it turns brown. So it's just a reaction with oxygen. And, you know, it's not pretty, but it's normal and it's nothing to be really worried about. But eh, sometimes it's not as attractive as we'd like. So another really interesting thing about the oil in the skin is if it's, um, it, you know how sometimes the oil can be really, really thin? Sometimes it can be really thick and sticky. And sometimes it can actually be quite odorous as well. Well, that oil is, um, you know, the consistency of it, of a lot of it is controlled by your hormones. And so not to say that all acne is hormonally based, but it's really affected by your hormones in a really big way. Hi, Maude. Thanks for joining us. Um, so the oil can not only can come from the inside of the skin, but it can also come from the surface. So, um, you know, among myself and our, the estheticians that work with me and some of my colleagues, um, you know, we refer to some of the over-the-counter products as, uh, mm, well, let's just say, have you ever heard of mac knee? Hello, Mud. Um, so if you're using MAC makeup, I hate to say it, it's beautiful, it's got great pigment and great color, it is massively clogging. So you want to ditch that stuff and find something else. Um, in our clinic, we do keep a whole list, if you're, if you're on our program, we give you a whole list of pore clogging ingredients, and that's really, really helpful. But you can also find some of them online if it's not something you can do to come in, and that's cool. But you definitely want to be on the lookout for several really important ingredients, one being um, Lorith 4 and isopropyl myristate, um, palmitic acid. Some of those are in so many over-the-counter products, including your makeup. They're super, super pore clogging. So um, when you want to kind of think back to, like we talked about, the, the follicle getting filled with dead cells and then collecting with oil, and then it's compacting. Well, the oil is coming from the underside, but it's also being deposited from the surface through in ingredients in makeup and also things like fabric softener and um, um, there are other things that will aggravate it as well um, if you're a swimmer you know the chlorine can actually aggravate it and it's a lot more complicated than just the chlorine but there's a whole lot of things that will contribute to it um, so moving on um, one of the other causes of acne is actually bacteria and that's where people go oh my god it's all about the bacteria we got to kill the bacteria well, I hate to tell you, but the bacteria is one of the last things that happens with acne. The first is the inflammation. In fact, the inflammation is what triggers everything. Then you get the retention hyperkeratosis. Sorry, my, my husband. He's amazing. He just walked by. Um, and um, so you get the retention hyperkeratosis, and then you get the oil compaction, and then the bacteria comes in. What's really, really cool is the that little compaction that you get, that microcomedone in the pore, that actually acts as sort of a, an all-you-can-eat buffet, if you will, for the bacteria. And what's really, really interesting, the bacteria, so everybody probably knows, um, <laughs> I'll tell them you said hi, Mud. Um, people think of the acne as like, oh, the P. acne's bacteria. Well, there's like at least 10 different species of P. acne's, and they all respond a little bit differently in the skin and they all respond a little bit differently to different topicals as well, which is 
just kind of a little kink in the work. So if you're already trying to get your skin clear and things aren't working, that's one of the reasons why, because you know it doesn't work for everybody. Hey Liz, how are you? Thanks for joining. Um, so, so what happens now you've got, so you have to kind of visualize, you've got that little compaction in the pore and the bacteria actually eats that sebum. That's what, thank you, I love you too, Liz. <laughs> the bacteria eats the sebum that's in the pore. And now, because of the dead skin cells, that, that retention hyperkeratosis, it holds it in place. So now what you've created is an all-you-can-eat buffet. And I like to think of the bacteria as sort of, um, no offense to frat boys, but they're kind of like frat boys who like to party. Hey, there's an all-you-can-eat buffet over here. Let's come on over here and hang out, right? So all the little bacteria comes over and they, they start partying in that pore. And now you get more inflammation and the immune system kicks in. The immune system comes by and they're like the campus police. All right, you guys, we got to get out of here. We've enough partying out of here. Out of here. You're, you're done. And then they get kicked out, and now you get that pustule. And that, ha that can happen in a couple of hours. You know, you, I'm sure everybody who's on this, you've had those mornings where, you know, you wake up. Like, you go to bed, your skin's amazing. You wake up in the morning, and you have, like, a third eye, right? Or you look like Rudolph. God knows. <laughs> I've had those days. Yes, I have had acne. I used to have a lot of acne, in fact. And I don't, you can see, mm, I have no more acne. Yay! Um, and there's a lot of things that will help that. But... It's just important to know those little good things. So let's just talk a little bit about inflammation. As I mentioned in the beginning, inflammation is the very first thing that happens. So you've got two different kinds of sort of generalized inflammation. One is systemic. So that means it's happening in through the whole body. And then there's localized or acute inflammation. And that's like what actually happens when you have a blemish. So like say, you know, you get that great big old pimple right there. That's localized inflammation, but it started because there's systemic inflammation, which is it's happening through your whole body. And that's what brings us to the one of the things that I promised we would talk about is the food groups. Hey, Louise, thanks for joining. Um, the four food groups that you really want to avoid um, because they really, really aggravate acne. And um, the biggest one now. Um, let me just clarify. It doesn't mean you can't eat these foods, but you should be aware that they're definitely problematic. So the first one is dairy. Now, I know people said, well, my dermatologist said that food has nothing to do with it and never affects my skin and that's blah, blah, blah. Here, I'm here to tell you, here's a little truth bomb for you, okay? If your dermatologist is, I'm serious, if your dermatologist tells you that your diet does not affect your acne and doesn't affect your skin, you need to get a new dermatologist, okay? Because they are so far behind on the medical literature, it is everywhere. You know, if all you need to do is do a do a, a PubMed search or go onto Google Scholar and research, you know, diet and acne, and you will find there is tons of studies that show that that is the case. So it's really, really important to um, to pay attention to these things. Now, we know for sure that dairy is problematic, and nobody really knows why it's a problem. But it is believed that it is because of what are called insulin-like growth factors. And the insulin-like growth factors, basically, they act like insulin in the body. And it has nothing to do with, <laughs> has nothing to do with whether it's organic or full fat or pastured or anything. It has nothing to do with it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not downing, I'm not getting down on uh, dairy. What I'm saying is that dairy is made for baby cows. It makes baby cows grow. And, um, you know, I enjoy a little cheese here and there and some yogurt and whatever. I'm not, I'm not dissing that. However, if you are acne prone and you are chugging the milk every day or you're eating, you know, a couple of cups of yogurt every day, it could be a problem and it's a good chance that it's bothering your skin. So that's really something you want to look at. Another big um, source of hidden dairy is actually uh, protein powders. So a lot of people will do like a little protein shake in the morning and if it's made of whey protein, it's a problem. You want to scratch that and find something else. I actually like um, Sun Warrior is good. Uh, uh, Dr. Sarah Gottfried has a couple of um, a couple of really nice ones that are uh, pea and hemp protein and those are really good and um, just read the labels. That's the most important thing. Read the labels. So you want to avoid dairy because it will definitely aggravate it. Um, hey Mary Claire, how are you? Um, so 
one of the ways you can tell if it's a dairy issue is people, they tend to get sort of like a rashy um, on the sides of the cheek. That's almost always a dairy issue. Um, it, sometimes it can show up on the